weekend's real estate rundown. We are featuring four bedroom homes in Miami Dade and Broward that just came on the market. They all have pools, plus they have lake views as well. Real estate expert Liz Caldwell, she's scouring the MLS yes. looking for these <laughs> listings. And uh, so they're all under six hundred thousand dollars, right? All under six hundred. Okay, well they better be nice but for that. They kind of have money. The best of everything. All right, well, let's take a look. What do you got? All right, the first one I'd like to show you is in Parkland. This is in Casa del Sol. It's listed for $550,000. Four bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage. It was built in 2001. Has about 2,700 square feet under air. Very nicely done. And in this development, there's only like 29 homes in this entire oh, development, which is cover, really man. nice. Big kitchen. Very big kitchen. Very contemporary, shaker style cabinets, really cool backsplash, um, nice wood floors upstairs. You've got a gorgeous um, balcony that overlooks the most amazing views of the Everglades. And a big bathroom, too. Big very nice bath. size bathroom, very comfortable, very, that, you know, nice contemporary transitional look that everybody's looking for. Beautiful pool that and great entertainment area. You can't beat it. And the maintenance fee in here is seven hundred and seventeen a quarter, and you know it's gated and all those wonderful you get things all those that you like. With it. Beautiful, beautiful house. They did a great job. What else you got? The next one is in Palmetto Bay, great school district. This is listed for five hundred and seventy-six thousand five hundred. Once again, four bedroom, two and a half bath volume ceilings in the main living area. They did wood flooring, uh, actually the wood tile flooring, as you know, which is very popular. No that goes up there, to yeah. upstairs. Nice, once again, big kitchen, very contemporary in styling. Um, you can't beat it for this. Nice master bedroom. And this is upstairs. You've got tray ceilings through most of the rooms throughout. And you know, a lot of people like these nice gray tones. They're very soothing. You can do a lot with That's them. That's a hot look now, yeah. Very, very hot look. Built in 2000. And you can't beat it for the price. It's a nice private backyard. Once again, a beautiful pool, especially on a day like this, to just kind of And a nice privacy relax. fence, too. Very nice. And any HOA fee? No HOA fee in this and one. last but not least. This is in Davies Forest Ridge, which is in central Davie. Great location, yep. very hot. And you're built up really high there on the ridge. This one is for $599,900. They did an amazing job in this one-story home. Once again, four bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's about 3,000 square feet. This one was built in 1990, and you can see all the things that they've done. They've taken amazing care of this home. As you saw, the double oven, you know, stainless steel appliances, wood floors throughout the main living area. What's nice about this, the master bedroom, you know, it's nice and big sitting area. So it's the bathroom. Nice big bathroom area, you know, with the um, glass enclosure. Tub, the big glass I can see you in there, my yeah. friend. <laughs> And they did um, now, impact windows upstairs, I'll and you've got the shutters, French doors, and a beautiful pool area. And the views from this house are absolutely to die for. And it's nice to have a cover, cover porch like that, too. Oh, definitely. And the maintenance fee here is only two eighty five a quarter. Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Liz. You're welcome. Nikki? Thanks, guys. Todd tried to get me to use, get a double oven <laughs> when I was redoing my kitchen. I'm like, I don't even use one. Well, if you what? use them, it's worth it. Why would That's I need right. two? <laughs> oh. Hashtag Todd's a cook, I'm not. If you don't have any weekend plans, we certainly have some ideas for you. Lots going on. It's the end of Caribbean American Heritage Month, so the Caribbean American Exhibition and Festival taking place to get today at Pem in Pembroke Pines starting at 4 this afternoon. It's being held at the Holy Sacrament Episcopal Church. That's right off North University Drive. Organizers are putting on a live music, food, exhibits. They'll have a lot of fun. Tickets are 10 bucks for adults. For kids 12 and under, you are free. And experience your local artists and buy their work at the Art Society at Westfield Broward Mall. The mall is launching a three-month rotating art gallery. To celebrate, they are hosting a series of cultural performances, live painting demonstrations, and art workshops. It's happening from 2 to 3 in the afternoon today at the mall. It's free to attend. And Irie Weekend underway, where everything is Irie. It's all for a good cause, the Irie Foundation. Today is their barbecue beach bash and concert. It's starting at noon at the Fontainebleau Hotel in Miami Beach. Featuring celebrity Jeff Guy Fieri. There will be live performances by Jason Derulo and Justine Skye, plus giveaways. Tickets are 60 bucks. They go toward the Irie Foundation, benefiting at-risk kids. You can find out much more on the weekend, Irie Weekend, and everything else going on this weekend here in South Florida. Go to our website, local10.com. We put a complete list there for you. 
and you and the fam. Well, just ahead, firefighters working around the clock to save an animal in need. That's right, and the community joining in. Oh, this yeah. rescue in Alabama caught on camera. We're going to tell you all about how this puppy got stuck down a 60-foot hole. Nikki Mohan and Todd Tonga on the one and only Local 10 News. Right now at 9.30, cornered and carjacked, a victim recounting what she calls the worst day of her life in a one and only exclusive. This as two suspects are still on the run. We hear from the mother of a man accused of killing his wife in front of their child, why she says he snapped. A ritzy robbery of a Rolex in Miami, a woman allegedly stealing that man's expensive watch after a night out, how authorities were able to catch their suspect. And a fireworks warning for families getting ready to celebrate the 4th of July. The message from one mother whose child lost his right hand in a fireworks accident. Local 10 News starts right now. 78 degrees right now. We've actually cooled down a little bit, thanks for, probably to the rainfall and the cloud cover that's out and about there. You know, this is, of course, my dog Bruno's favorite time of the year <laughs> when so fireworks he, are popping and yeah. he's in the oh, bathtub. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. He does not. I don't know. That. Just post those Instagram videos. <laughs> of, now he does. He changed where the bathroom is, so now the dog like, opens the door and goes in the closet. Yes, he knows it's pretty how to entertaining. Open doors. Why yes, doesn't he have an Instagram I account? I should do that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Monetize yeah, come that. Come on. That's make him absolutely. a star. Bam. Yeah, get out You're of this. You're welcome. Get out of this dead end job. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Come on now. <laughs> dead end. You've been doing this for, what, 47 too, years or too, something? Too he's, he's won his Silver Circle Award, and now he's talking about it being a dead end job. Good grief. Anyway, I know I know you're just kidding about that. We've got a lot of uh, shower and thunderstorm activity on the radar, but not in any one particular spot. They're kind of scattered right now. So about 30 to 40 percent of the metro of Miami-Dade and Broward getting some of those showers and storms now, uh, especially eastern portions of Broward County and also uh, northeastern portions of Miami-Dade County, anywhere from Hialeah to Aventura, Hollywood, up toward Fort Lauderdale 
and on back toward Miramar as well. Future radar does indicate as we stop this at noon, we're going to still see some of this around but as we head toward four this afternoon. It moves much farther away. So for today, we'll see some storms around up until about one o'clock. And then after that, we'll see mostly sunny weather developing later this afternoon. Quick check of your tropics right now does indicate that things are fairly quiet across the Gulf, the Caribbean and the Atlantic Ocean. And the National Hurricane Center says no tropical development expected. None in the next five days. That's good news. Yes, it is. Thank you, John. This just in an Amber Alert issued out of New Smyrna Beach. Take a look at the photos on your screen. The three children on the left were last seen yesterday. Authorities say they may be in the company of the woman on the right, Benita Porter Carter, and they may be traveling in a white Suzuki Grand Vitara with a Florida tag. We'll bring you any updates on their search efforts if we get them. Well, a victim of an armed carjacking is sharing her story with the one and only, calling it the worst day of her life. And while one alleged carjacker has been caught, she says two are still out there. Local 10 News reporter Madeline Wright is live from Southwest Miami-Dade with this exclusive. Madeline, she thought it would be the last day of her life. Yeah, she did. She was preparing to say goodbye to her uh, her family, her, her the father of her children. She wanted to say goodbye to them. She didn't know if she was going to make out alive out of this situation after be she became the victim of an armed carjacking here on Southwest 186th Street. Now she's urging others in an, in an exclusive interview with Local 10 to always be aware of their surroundings so that they don't become victims too. Flashes, they keep on coming back. I keep on seeing it. I keep on reliving it every day. Adniri Stamas describing the worst day of her life. Last week, she was at a red light on her way to work on Southwest 186th Street at the Turnpike. Three men in a dark sedan drove by. Looked at me, and then they backed up and crossed the medium and got in front of my car, blocking it. Dama says she tried to back up, but it was too late. I saw him coming out, pointing the gun at me. I thought, okay, he wants my purse. The gunman ordered her to open the door, grabbed her purse, and then threw her out of the car. I felt face down. At that moment, I, I thought, okay, he's going to shoot me in the back. The thug drove off with her white Lexus, her purse, and her phone. She tells us a good Samaritan finally showed up, calling police. Hours later, detectives got a tip. It was her white Lexus. The driver inside passed out. 20-year-old Isaac Rosier was arrested. Police say he ended up confessing to the crime. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was not going to see my son anymore, my husband. Back here live at the intersection of Southwest 186th Street and the Turnpike, we can tell you that the man who was arrested is facing a slew of charges. However, the victim says there are two other suspects still on the loose. If you have any info on who or where they are, call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Live in Southwest Miami-Dade, Madeline Wright, Local 10 News. We are hearing from the mother of an alleged murderer. 42-year-old Mark Berkowitz is accused of killing his wife, Anastasia Savitskaya. Now, he faced a Broward County judge yesterday on first-degree premeditated murder charges. Investigators said a detective arrived at that home on Cleary Boulevard just after 4 a.m. on Thursday to find the victim's body in the front hallway by the door. Crime scene techs were still gathering evidence from the home yesterday. The suspect's mother told Local 10 her son confessed to the killings. With, uh, by, it said he killed his wife with a hammer in front of their 7-year-old son. I went in the room, grabbed my grandson, and I put him in the bathroom, and I told him to stay there. I'm calling 911, and Mark says, oh no, I'm going to prison, I'm going to call 911. I think uh, he snapped because she just completely was letting him know, I want, don't want nothing to do with you. Berkowitz's mother says that her son was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and couldn't handle the breakup. He's now being held without bond in the Broward County Jail. One woman behind bars after police say she swiped a Rolex from a man she met at a nightclub. Her name is 23-year-old Kira White. She was arrested yesterday on grand theft charges nearly two weeks after she allegedly stole $65,000 in jewelry and cash from a tourist she met at the Blue Martini in Brickell. White was seen back in the club a week later. Witnesses recognized her and immediately called police. The victim, who was originally from New Jersey, says he went with this woman to his hotel. She slipped out without saying a word. When he woke up, this watch was gold Rolex was missing, his gold chain and $5,000 from his wallet. The woman is seen on camera coming out of the elevator, rummaging through what appears to be a bag and pulling out a towel.
She gave me another drink. Last I recall, she said, I'm gonna use the restroom. And then I walked up, there was a watch I had, my diamond watch on top of a towel. And when I jumped up around 7.30, I realized the towel was gone. He says his jewelry has not yet been recovered, but he's glad that it was just jewelry taken and he is okay. In Miami, police are looking for a man accused of vandalizing a Wendy's restaurant and surveillance video captured that suspect smashing the drive through window. Police say this suspect has hit the same Wendy's restaurant on Northwest 27th Avenue and 82nd Street at least three times. His last act of vandalism was on Monday night. If you know who he is, please call police. Prosecutors involved in the case against the Stoneman Douglas shooter have released new witness statements describing the moments just before and after that shooting. No, in one account, a student described hearing two loud, loud bangs in the hallway, initially thinking that they were just balloons, but then moments later came more bullets, one of them grazing her arm and another went through her shirt. She then witnessed three of her classmates being killed. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty against the shooter. Well, we're just a few days away from the 4th of July, and authorities want to make sure everyone celebrates safely. It's important. One parent is urging caution after her sons were actually injured in a fireworks accident last year. Local 10 News reporter Samantha Bryant has the story from Fort Lauderdale. Well, I can tell you that the three kids from the fireworks incident in Pompano of last year are doing well now. Their parents, though, say they won't have access to fireworks anytime soon. Maybe a month or so into the school year to stop wearing a sock over his hand. Life is different for nine-year-old Marvin Lane since he lost his right hand, but he's adjusted. And he used to write with right, now I'm right with left. Learned to write with his left hand now. On July 6th of last year, Marvin, his 10-year-old brother Robert, and 12-year-old cousin Jeremy were at McNair Park in Pompano Beach, where they found a firecracker and a lighter as well. Their parents had no idea they left the house. Before we could throw it, it just blew up. The explosive went off in Marvin's hand and all three were rushed to Broward General Hospital. Robert had injuries to his face and Jeremy lost two of his fingers. It's my thumb and my finger. That is like just half, like it's only got half of it. Back in May, another eight-year-old in Southwest Miami-Dade lost a finger after lighting a firecracker. My kids, um, we're going to go to someone else's event and then none of my children are going to have hands-on activities with any fireworks. Walisha Thomas says that her boys still haven't learned the lesson. In fact, she has this message for other parents. We continue to tell them what's right, what's wrong. We still have to keep an eye on them because they still turn around and do the same things. Now, these accidents are a good reminder of what can happen. If you're looking for an alternate event to take the kids and family to still enjoy fireworks, there's the Fort Lauderdale 4th of July Spectacular. It's going to be held at the beach right off of A1A and Los Olas Boulevard on Wednesday from noon to 9 p.m. Again, that's just one event of many that's happening in South Florida. If you'd like to find out where you can take the family to go enjoy the fireworks this 4th of July, go ahead and head to our website, local10.com. For now, we're in Fort Lauderdale. Samantha Bryant, Local 10 News. Thank you, Samantha. Well, as you know, every week we feature hundreds of great pets waiting to be adopted in South Florida. Oh, today we have a putty tat. No. Two putty tats. Two putty tats. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to Argentina and Brazil. It must be World Cup time. Yes. We're going to tell you how you can take them whole. That's their goal. Take oh, Local 10 okay. online with you wherever you're headed. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction.
All right, this is the last Catter Day mm -hmm. in June. As you know, every week we feature adorable pets in need of good homes. Today, Brittany Moscato is here from the Humane Society of Broward County. To introduce us to Argentina and Brazil. You got a little World Cup theme going on over oh, there at yeah. the Humane Society. So these two guys are just two kittens in a litter of about seven. So we've got Brazil in my hands. We've got Argentina. And then Ooh, back so at the soft. shelter, we have their siblings, Panama, France, <laughs> England, and Mexico. So definitely somebody was having fun with this litter of kittens. But yes, like you were saying before, their goal is to <laughs> find a home by the end of the day. It's the last catter day in Adopt a Shelter That's Cat right. Month. And maybe if you take three, you can do your own hat trick, right? Oh, yes, for sure. There we go. <laughs> Don't get me with the soccer references. I'll follow them. Um, and and that, Catterday, tell me more about Catterday. Like, they're really, it's really a good time to go adopt a cat. It really is. I mean, right now our shelter is so full with lovable furry felines. We have over a hundred right now. So in hopes of getting all these wonderful cats into homes, we are actually, uh, discounting the adoption fees of adult felines, so that's six months of age and older. Uh, so you can adopt an adult feline for just $15. Wow, that's a good deal. It really is, and of course, you can always adopt two adult felines for one adoption fee. So, I mean, really, it's I mean, it's the best of both worlds. You get two adoption fee, uh, two cats for one adoption fee, and it's even discounted. Right, and all your animals come spayed or neutered, because it's important so that we don't have this overpopulation of cats. That's exactly correct, and they're up to date with all of their vaccines. Did you bring us any other doggies or puppies? So from the smallest of small, we're going <laughs> to the largest Look of the large. <laughs> so this is Tiger. He's 103 pounds of love. Aww. He is really a gentle giant, though, so don't let his size uh, intimidate That's my you. goal weight. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, I mean, and really, his adoption fee is only $100. So, I mean, pound for pound. That's <laughs> what, I mean, hey, you're getting it, enough bang for your buck. Exactly. And he's just as sweet as can be. Just and very how did he gentle. come by? Do you know his story? He was um, surrendered by an owner who I don't think had the space for him because he, as you can imagine, starts out quite small and then grows to be 103 pounds. That's what I say about kids. People have them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't want to head out to the pet shelter today, you can look for your perfect pet pal online. Just head to local10.com, click on our pet section under our lifestyle tab. There you'll find a link to dogs and can cats and animals. Other animals, uh, excuse me, ready for adoption. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you can post pictures of an animal you've lost or one you found. Good luck, Brazil. Good luck, Argentina. And good luck in the World Cup to Brittany. Good to <laughs> Thank see you. So you. Much. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you for having us. Todd. All right, thanks, Nikki. Well, part of South, parts of South Florida waking up to rain this morning. Here's video from Pembroke Pines just a short time ago, really coming down hard. Weather Authority meteorologist John Gerard here with a full forecast now. Good morning, John. Yeah, hey there, Todd. You know, we got on the air at 5 o'clock this morning and the skies were clear. And I said, you know, watch out for some of these showers and storms later this morning. They're going to come in a little bit earlier than usual. And the weather has really changed quickly as expected. But so far, since it's following the predicted script, we're still expecting things to clear up nicely as we head toward the afternoon hour. So we're going to get this rain out of the way this morning up until about maybe noon or so. Here's your future forecast. We're going to go from now and stop this at right about noon. And notice, forget all the green stuff there, but look at the little yellows and reds there. Scattered. Uh, quick hitting downpours there, but as we head toward about uh, three or so this afternoon, it really pushes off to the west and we start to clear out nicely. By six o'clock, this computer model indicating a little bit of back building, some of those showers moving back toward us. I wouldn't worry a whole lot about that at this point because by nine o'clock we are completely in the clear. So it looks like the bulk of this, if not all of it, is going to come between now and about one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so if you're out there playing golf or you're uh, planning on heading to the beach, it looks like you probably should have waited until later today. You can see these showers moving quickly to the north, but they're not, it's not raining everywhere. Maybe 30 to 40% of us getting some of that right now, but there is some lightning in there mixed in with those showers. So uh, get to a safe place, get inside in some shelter if you're outdoors and you see lightning or hear thunder. Surf temperature at 87. The UV index will still be very high, especially later today as the skies begin to clear and the surf at about one to two feet. Right now we've got temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s all across the board and we'll top out close to 90 by the time the day is done at 91. A little less rain tomorrow and Monday as some Saharan dust moves in, then back to some scattered mainly afternoon storms heading into the holiday week. And right now the fireworks still look like they'll be okay by Wednesday evening. That's your forecast. New overnight in Alabama cheers from volunteers after a seven-week-old deaf puppy was finally rescued after it fell down a hole on Thursday. Crews sent a camera down to follow the Australian shepherd named Toffee after she fell about 50 feet down that crevice. Eventually, though, crews were able to hook the puppy, lift her out of the hole with a lot of help. Toffee's owner is amazed at the rescue efforts. 
it's been an amazing outpouring of just kindness and sweetness. And I mean, people that I've never seen before in my life. Just about the whole town came out to help. Volunteers brought in lights and generators to help with rescue efforts as it went into the night. And we're glad to report that Toffee's doing just and fine. And that's just Toffee-tastic. Yeah. No Girl Scout cookie reference intended. Of course it was. Is it that time of year already? No, it's not. Oh, thank goodness. But it's coming up soon, so put in your order. I better. <laughs> LeBron James will become a free agent after he declined his $35 million contract option with the Cavs. A look at the four-time MVP's options that he has coming up next in sports. But first, wouldn't you like $35 million? Here's your chance. Very winning lottery numbers. Time now for Sports Time. Nikki Style, it is the first of two big decisions for LeBron James, the next being where he will actually play. And this morning, we're getting a pretty good idea of who has the best shot at landing the best player in the world. Oh, say Miami, down, say Miami, say Miami. It all comes down to money. Yeah. LeBron has declined his Cavaliers option for the next season and will now officially become a free agent when the clock strikes midnight on Sunday. LeBron has made it clear in the past that he has no intention of signing a contract for anything less than the maximum amount the league allows. I tried that too, didn't work. Assuming that's the only, only case, only three teams right now have the ability to pay him. The Lakers, the 76ers, or the Cavs. And he said no to the Cavs with LA now being the favorite. It's not great news for the Heat, who likely need to come up with that money and work out a trade with the Cavaliers to bring LeBron back to Miami. Still, you know, nothing can be ruled out. LeBron will also play close attention to the fate of Kawhi Leonard. Well, Kawhi, you ask? A number of reports say the two stars would love to play together and Kawhi wants to be in L.A. Still, the Spurs can trade Kawhi wherever they want and whoever pulls off a deal for Kawhi could also take the lead for LeBron. 
Yes, they do. To baseball we go. Marlins and Mets. Sandy Alcantara making his major league debut for the Fish, and they hope this is a sign of things to come. Alcantara gives up just one run in five innings. He strikes out two, and he gets a lot of help from another with Lewis Brinson. Drills that one to left and gone. Fish take a one-zip lead, and we're still in the third inning when JT Riddle breaks it open. High and deep to right. A three-run home run there. Marlins win it 8-2. to two. I just looked at Instagram when LeBron's on the beach with his family. Because he's LeBron James. Uh, and and we're not. Because <laughs> we're Todd and Nikki, and that does it for sports. Todd and Nikki, stop with there. So to come this morning, a parking ticket from the 70s. This is stuck in my purse. Making its way back to the police department along with the cash. Why the parking offender says he kept the citation for so long. Listen to this. A man has finally paid a parking ticket that he got 44 years ago. Wow, and he even added a little extra in there for all the trouble. The ticket was issued back in 1974, and it was only $2. What would be worth about $20 today? Is that right? What about the fines? The man got the ticket for having an Ohio license plate on his car while in Pennsylvania. Back then, the department didn't have the technology to keep track of out-of-state cars. And after all these decades, he's finally paid the ticket and added $3 in interest. He paid us five, so that's 44 years later, so that means I only made $3 in 44 years, so I can't retire on this. We do appreciate that this individual paid their ticket, and again, we encourage other individuals, if you have an outstanding ticket, please pay them. Now they boot your car. <laughs> Along with the payment was a vague return address that read, quote, feeling guilty. Any town, California, <laughs> the police department says they're hoping to one day thank the mystery man in person. He probably just found it like he was rifling through some stuff and said, I don't know. You could uh, wallpaper the room with your parking ticket. No, I don't. They go <laughs> magically disappear. <laughs> ah, well, a man sitting on a curb tased in the back by a police officer, and this was caught on camera. Yeah, ahead of 10 o'clock, what the witness who recorded the scene has to say about this incident that's causing an uproar. I'm Michelle Bernstein. I celebrate the 4th with a red, white, and blue cookout on Soflo Taste. Chef Michelle Bernstein has an Independence Day menu including grilled pork chops for dessert. You can either have strawberry creamsicle or pineapple chili popsicle or both. Chef Michelle lights the charcoal on Soflo Taste at 1030, then at 11 on Soflo Home Project. Design expert Martin Amato is out in the backyard and the pool with a patio redesign perfect for entertaining friends and family. The Soflo Hour coming up next.
Right now on the Local 10 News, a community remembering the five people killed in a deadly newsroom shooting in Maryland as we learn new details about the suspect. We're also hearing from the family of one of the victims, South Florida native Rob Hyerson. We have live team coverage. A South Florida hospital on lockdown for hours after receiving a threat. Details of the scare and the person that's been detained. And the fight for keeping families together at the border continues this morning. Demonstrations are planned for around the nation and right here in South Florida. We'll have a live report. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. Good morning, South Florida. It is Saturday, June 30th. I'm Todd Tongan. And I'm Nikki Mohan. And we've been here so long. Uh, the sun came up, it rained, and now the rain's going away. The sun's back out again. So yeah. If we're not careful, it's going to be nighttime by the time we get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? It was, see, it was nighttime when we came in, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Three, four o'clock this morning. Anyway, for those of you who have not been following along, uh, we were predicting, uh, I was predicting rain, even when the, the morning hours were pretty nice, about four or five o'clock in the morning. So it's pretty much right on schedule. The point I'm trying to make here is that if it continues to be on schedule, then we'll get it out of here just like uh, we've designed it as well. Well, we're not exactly designing it to get out of here. So it's been forecast to do that. You can see some of those showers and thunderstorms across, especially portions of populated uh, Broward County from Fort Lauderdale all the way down to about Hollywood. And then you get down toward uh, Kendall and we're getting some showers there as well. But this is where the heaviest rain is falling right now, right around Fort Lauderdale. If you need any proof, take a look at this. That's our Fort Lauderdale Tower Cam. Yep, it's raining. <laughs> Shows it right there. Pictures don't lie. And we've got temperatures being knocked backwards a little bit in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, but it's still 85 in Key West. Future radar does indicate some of these showers will continue until about oh, 1 or 2 o'clock. Then they're going to be pushing off to the west, and they'll be out of here as we head toward the second half of the day. It's time now for a check of the tropics, and here's what's going on in terms of your tropical update. We do not see anything. Well, that's the wrong graphic again. Darn it. Anyway, we don't see any formation in the tropics anywhere for the next five days. Certainly good news. That's, that's weather. Thank you, John. We begin with that deadly rampage in Annapolis, Maryland, a community coming together to remember the five people killed in the newsroom of the Capitol Gazette. The Baltimore Orioles among those honoring the victims, holding a moment of silence before their game against the Angels and tweeting out a picture of the Capitol Gazette's seat in the team's press box. As several vigils were held overnight, we are learning new details about that suspect. Overnight, candlelight vigils all across Annapolis, remembering the five lives lost inside the Capitol Gazette building Thursday. Rachel Pacella is a reporter at the paper and was injured in the shooting. What do I want the world to know about my colleagues? Um, that I'll miss them? Reporter Wendy Winters, editorial writer Gerald Fishman, editor John McNamara, sales assistant Rebecca Smith, and editor and columnist Robert Hyacin all killed. Police say by the suspected shooter, 38-year-old Jared Ramos, seen here being led away in handcuffs right after the shooting. Other cell phone videos capturing the chaos, survivors evacuating the building. Marjorie Rock was on the second floor recording the video. There were about seven large officers, heavily armed, heavily armored, screaming at us. Get your hands up, get your hands up, get your hands up. Authorities believe Ramos held a deep grudge against the paper. In 2011, it reported on Ramos harassing a woman online. He pled guilty to harassment. Ramos sued the paper for defamation, but it was dismissed. His fury took him to Twitter, telling one reporter, hell awaits. And to two editors, it would be nicer to see them cease breathing. One of those editors, Tom Marquot. When I heard his name, didn't surprise me. President Trump offering these words on Friday. This attack shocked the conscience of our nation and filled our hearts with grief. Journalists, like all Americans, should be free from the fear of being violently attacked while doing their job. And our team coverage of this tragedy brings us back here to South Florida, where one of the victims, Rob Hyacin, began his career. This morning, the Hyacin family sharing their grief. Local 10's Alex Finney joins us live from Doral with more on this. Alex. Good morning to you, Todd and Nikki. Well, we know that Rob Hyacin was known by so many people here in South Florida. He had a family base here. His brother works at the Miami Herald, as well as his nephew's uh, wife, who actually was one of the first people to hear the news that came out on Thursday. Great. Uh writer and storyteller. Rob's colleagues at the Palm Beach Post reflect on the man he was. His writing was lyrical and beautiful, but also um, smart and funny. And his brother. 
this tragedy will eventually uh, fall out of the headline, and a few weeks from now we'll be replaced by another one with victims and, and families grieving just as ours is. You know, he's a really good man and a wonderful father. And this is Carl's son, Scott, Rob's nephew, who is now a lawyer but started at the Palm Beach Post where his uncle worked. His uncle, a journalist, a gifted writer. The nuance, you know, the whole world's gray. There's no black and white, and he was but it's hard in, in journalism to take the time to, to, to demonstrate that through your reporting, but he was really good at that. And, and I think it was important to him to, you know, to everyone to see the world as complicated as it was. Scott's wife, Jenny, is a reporter at the Herald. She was one of the first to break the news about the tragic shooting Thursday afternoon. No matter how many tragedies you write about and, um, and, or, or cover or become familiar with, it's still, you know, there's just no way to prepare you for the, for the shock and, um, and anger. And we know that hundreds of mourners gathered yesterday night in Annapolis to honor the people that lost their lives on Thursday. We know that Hyacinth does leave behind a wife and three children. They had just finished celebrating their 33rd wedding anniversary, and he died on the day of her birthday. Of course, we're going to be learning more about this as the investigation continues to unfold over the coming weeks. But coming to you live now from Doral, Alex Finney, Local 10 News. A big scare yesterday in Jackson Memorial Hospital. Police swarming the hospital after teaming up with security to check every floor after a shooting threat was phoned in. Police have yet to confirm, but several sources within the hospital say that call came from inside of JMH. Jackson Health System eventually tweeted that there was no active shooter. One person was detained, and it is unclear if that person will face charges. Firefighters battling big flames in Opelika yesterday morning. Sky 10 was over the massive fire that sparked yesterday at a used auto parts business on Cairo Lane. The tires only added fuel to the fire. Thick black smoke could be seen for miles. On the ground, firefighters quickly put them out. No one was hurt, but the owner of the business says nine vehicles were destroyed. A teenager who was once known as the boy from the Kendall Toyota ads is facing charges linked to a deadly drug deal. He's now 17 years old. Michael Gonzalez is being held on $50,000 bond on charges of tampering with evidence and selling drugs. He was not charged directly with the shooting and killing of his friend Omar Darwish. In late January, Darwish was shot and killed during a drug deal right outside the L.A. Fitness in Aventura. Police say Gonzalez was selling marijuana to two other teens at the time when the buyers opened fire, killing Darwish. Those suspects were arrested earlier this year on murder charges. The family of a corrections officer killed on the job now demanding answers, trying to figure out what led up to the deadly crash that killed their loved one, 48-year-old Tawana Marin. On Monday, Marin was overseeing inmates working on the side of the road in Coconut Creek when another car crashed into the back of a dump truck, leaving her trapped in between. Marin later died at the hospital. The family says they have gotten few details, and so far, no arrests have been made. They don't even know who killed their mom. We don't know who owned the car. We don't know who was driving the car. We have no information. Um, they can't even pursue um, insurance, the, the death benefit, to pay for the funeral. Um, so it's, it's, it's placed an increased burden, an unnecessary increased burden on this family. The family says they are prepared to file a wrongful death lawsuit if they don't get the answers to their questions. An update on an Amber Alert out of New Smyrna Beach. The three children reported missing have been found safely. Police say they are there with their grandmother, who is also located. The Trump administration responding this morning after a federal judge in San Diego ruled that the government must reunify families separated at the border. Lawyers say the ruling means authorities can legally keep families detained until their cases are complete. The Justice Department says cases in which immigrants remain detained move through the system quicker than if they are released. But legal experts say this means that immigrant families could spend months or even years in detention due to a years-long backlog in immigration courts. Several protests against the separation of families expected to take place in cities across the nation today, including right here in South Florida. Local 10 News reporter Samantha Bryant joins us live in Hollywood, where one rally is just getting underway. Good morning, Samantha. Good morning, Todd and Nikki. Well, as you can see right beside me, there's a lot of protesters here 
from the Families Belong Together movement. They're here right outside of the Diplomat Hotel rallying against President Trump's zero tolerance immigration policy. We're counting probably a good 100 people. We can see a lot more people pouring in. They started coming here around 930 today. And as you can see, more people are continuing to pour in. Now, across the street, we also do see some Trump protesters. Now, the reason why these people are across the street is because they're not allowed on the property of the Diplomat Hotel. We're told that despite the fact that President Trump signed an executive order last week reversing his administration's family separation policy, many of these protesters feel that the recent executive order doesn't go far enough. Now, we're also told that there's going to be several speakers today, including State Senator Gary Farmer and Mayor of Tallahassee Andrew Gillum, as well as State Representative Chevron Jones. Now, again, this is just one of many of the rallies that are happening across the country, um, a part of the Families Belong Together movement. You can see some of the signs. A lot of protesters here since we've been here at 9 o'clock. One of the signs that I'm beside right now, as you can see, says America. It has America kind of slashed out families first, reunite families now. Again, there is a very big police presence here, making sure that everyone stays safe. But a lot of these protesters continue to pour in hoping to get their point across to their elected officials. We're live in Hollandale, Samantha Bryant, Local 10 News. Thank you, Samantha. President Trump planning to act fast on his Supreme Court choice, hoping to nominate a justice by July 9th, even though Justice Anthony Kennedy doesn't officially retire until the end of July. We're learning the president is considering two women as potential justices. The decision could put landmark decisions on abortion and same-sex marriage into jeopardy. The president is spending the weekend in New Jersey at his golf club. The commander-in-chief up early this morning tweeting about a request that he made to King Solomon of Saudi Arabia. He says he explained to him that because of the turmoil and dysfunction in Iran and Venezuela, I am asking that Saudi Arabia increase oil production maybe up to 2 million barrels to make up the difference. Price is too high. He has agreed. It was not immediately clear if Saudi Arabia agreed to the president's request or not. Now to sunrise, where at least 200 animals had to be removed from a property. At least three were dead, and many of them reportedly found malnourished. The video from the animal recovery mission showed chickens, cows, goats, dogs, all of them in dire need of care. The animal rights group believes that the people who kept the animals have ties to a slaughterhouse near Fort Myers. So far, no arrests have been made. Police are investigating. Coming up, exceptional customer service. The life-saving action this restaurant owner took after a customer choked on his food and it was all caught on camera. Plus, a woman dubbed Permit Patty may have lied when she told the San Francisco newspaper that she didn't call police. We hear from the 911 call next.
FEMA, FEMA's housing assistance for victims of hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria is ending today. FEMA says nearly everyone who used the program has found permanent housing, but nearly 1,800 Puerto Ricans are still living in hotels. Tomorrow will be the last day Maria victims can move back to Puerto Rico using FEMA assistance or start paying out of their pocket for housing. And with the largest concentration of those victims being here in Florida, State Senator Bill Nelson says something needs to be done. They have nowhere to go. The apartment rentals want a security deposit that is three or four times the monthly rent. And so many of these families do not have that much money saved. And FEMA says that the program was initially designed to last just two weeks, but it has been extended several times. New this morning, California police releasing the 911 call made by a woman known as Permit Patty. Her real name, Allison Ethel, she had gotten into a standoff with a little girl who was selling bottled water on a sidewalk. I'm on the sidewalk. Hi, I'm having someone that um, does not have a vendor permit that's selling water across from the ballpark. Uh, Can I tell you to talk to you about that? Okay, one second. Let me transfer you over to the police department. Hang on. As you heard, I've called the police on an eight-year-old girl. Her name is Jordan Rogers. That's her mom. She because she wasn't she didn't have a permit to sell water. Ethel has since stepped down as CEO from a cannabis company that she runs. After the backlash from the video, she says she now regrets her actions. Well, you're gonna need a lot of bottled water. So you're gonna need a lot of, a lot of water sure. out there today, John. No doubt about that. Well, right now we've got some water. It's on the radar. It's rain, showers and thunderstorms out there now, but this is gonna blow on through. The sun will come out. We'll get some hazy sunshine out there and then we'll see things really heating up with it. It's gonna feel like it's well into the 90s by later on this afternoon. This is the wide view of the radar, South Florida style, but now we'll get a close up look at where it's really coming down and it's mainly over central and eastern portions of Broward County, actually extending all the way down into northern Miami-Dade around Hialeah, but the, the uh, heavier showers continue we move to the north through Fort Lauderdale now. Had some very heavy rain there just a few minutes ago. Continues to move north up toward Coral Springs, eventually Parkland as well, over toward Deerfield Beach. And that will continue to push on up to the north and other showers way out in the Everglades now. So uh, this is a pattern that will feature some afternoon clearing because it started early. It's most likely going to be ending early. Here is the radar in motion. We'll stop this at 11 o'clock. We still have, at least according to the computer models, a pretty good chance of getting showers and thunderstorms across parts of uh, Miami in Broward by two o'clock. The heaviest has now pushed inland and away from us as we head toward five o'clock. It's just about all gone. In fact, it is for the metro of uh, Broward and Miami-Dade County. A few spotty uh, western suburb showers there in Miami-Dade County. Hollywood Beach Cam overcast skies right now. Not the greatest of beach days yet, but it will get better later today. 79 Fort Lauderdale, 79 currently in Miami and 85 with the sunshine in Key West right now. And we've got some muggy conditions out there as well. So here is your hour by hour as we go through the day today. We've got some scattered showers and storms out there now. We'll jump up to 86 by noon with a mix of clouds and sunshine. 40% coverage on the showers. We'll cut that in half only down to 20% by 2 p.m. Then mostly sunny at 4 o'clock and that's where we top out at around 90. The high today will get up to about 91. A layer of Saharan dust is going to be moving in and that is going to really suppress the rain chances by tomorrow and Monday. Only down to 20% both days and then we'll get more humidity back in here as we head through the holiday week and we'll see temperatures back into the 90s again. By the way, 4th of July, it's an extended look right now, but it does look like it'll be okay for the fireworks uh, in the evening. So there's your forecast. All right, John, thank you. An officer under investigation after he's caught on camera tasing an unarmed man who was just sitting on the curb. Why police say they were forced to deploy the taser in the first place coming up.
Well, a video is sparking controversy in Pennsylvania showing a man sitting on a curb and then getting tased by a police officer. Police say that they were responding to a 911 call of a man with a bat going after a group of people. But on, upon arrival on that scene, a police report says 27-year-old Sean Williams was instructed to sit down to stick his legs straight out in front of him and to cross his ankles. But he failed to follow those instructions. The woman who shot this video says cops were not making things clear about what he was supposed to do. The male uh, um, cop is yelling at him, talking about extend your legs, straighten your legs. You got the female officer telling him to cross his legs. They made it like really confusing. Williams had an outstanding warrant for possession of a controlled substance and public drunkenness. He was released on bail and an investigation is now underway in the use of force in this incident. Also caught on camera, a restaurant owner being credited for her quick thinking, helping out a customer choking on some chicken penne. Surveillance video from the restaurant in Virginia captured what happened. The owner saw what was going on and immediately ran over to perform the Heimlich maneuver on him. The food was out after two rounds of the Heimlich. Turns out the owner studied to be a nurse before getting into the restaurant biz. Coming up next on the Local 10 News, we're going to update the top stories we're following for you today. That's right, but first, taking a live look out of our Pembroke Park camera with his raindrops on the lens. Ah, John Gerard says it's going to clear up soon. When? He'll be back after the break. Take a look at our top stories. Loved ones are remembering South Florida native Rob Hyacin. The journalist was killed in Thursday shooting in Annapolis. Rob's brother, Carl, works for the Miami Herald. Family members we spoke to told us Rob put his heart into telling people stories. Four other people were killed in the shooting. The suspect is in custody. The victim of an armed carjacking speaking exclusively to local 10. She says that she was driving along Southwest 186th Street near the turnpike last week when three men approached her car. 
a white Lexus. They pointed a gun at her and pulled her out of the car and then took off in it. One of the alleged suspects was later arrested. Two others remain on the run. 23-year-old woman now behind bars, accused of allegedly stealing a $65,000 worth of jewelry and cash. Authorities say Kira White stole it from a man she met at the Blue Martini Bar in Miami early this month. One of the employees saw her at the bar a week later and called police. She's now facing a grand theft charge. And dozens of people gathering this morning for a pro-immigration rally in Hollywood. A group gathering at the Diplomat Hotel demonstrating against the separation of families at the border. The site is where local leaders will gather later today for a Florida Democratic Party leadership conference. The president did sign an executive order ending the separation of families at the border, but protesters are demanding swift action for reunification. Things have really uh, changed quickly this morning, have they not? We started off with dry weather earlier today, then the rains came. But here's your hour by hour through the afternoon hours. We'll see the uh, coverage of the rain about 40% by noon, only down to about 20% by 2 o'clock, and then mostly sunny by 4 p.m. We'll see highs of 91 today, and then a lot less on the rain tomorrow and Monday as Saharan dust moves in. And then we'll see uh, a typical South Florida week next week. And it looks good for the fireworks, despite the fact we may have some rain on 4th of July. Still a ways down the road, but it is. so far so good. Right. Okay, good. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. You got it. And thank you for joining us this morning for our local tent. Coming up, Chef Michelle Bernstein hosting a party for America's 240th birthday, SoFlo Days. Next, and then followed by SoFlo Home Project. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Remember, download the app or go to us on local10.com.